across the USA. Well, in most cases, just two states, but we're just going to not talk about where we're coming from. Um, anyway, my name is Amber, and I have my two fabulous friends with me. Um, why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Oh, my name is Allison, a.k.a. Allie. How's you doing? Um, and we have one more. And I'm Amy. And uh, that's it. You know, short and sweet like my name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. So, we've done our introductions. Um, I guess one of the things that we can talk about is how we all got into K-pop, how we know each other, uh, what are the things that brought us together, and what we're loving in K-pop right now. Um, I guess the, we probably should start off with how we know each other, and the best way to, be, to explain that is to have Amy explain how the three of us are friends. Yes. Okay, so... I met Amber virtually, like online only, back in what, 2012, maybe 2011? Yeah. yeah. And uh, we were both, 2012, we were both running sites for a popular book series. <laughs> and uh, we became friends, fast friends, even though we were on like rival sites or whatever. <laughs> and then, you know, I was following her on Twitter, and one day she said, hey man. I vote BTS for top group. And I'm like, who's that? And and that started me down the rabbit hole. And then I went to my first concert in New Jersey by myself. And I went on a Facebook group and found Allison, who was willing to meet me because we were staying in the same hotel and going to the same concert. And then me and Allison became fast friends. And then when Amber moved from the state she was in to the state Allison was in, I hooked them up. So now we're all friends and we're all K-pop buddies and we travel together and we've seen a couple groups together. Well, one, but there will be many more. <laughs> and now us crazy gals are doing this podcast because, hey, why not? Why not? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, on, baby. <laughs> You're the bridge that got yeah. together pretty much. Oh, I feel so gifted. <laughs> so special. And then, who was it? One of our... Who, someone pointed out that all three of our names started with A's. And that's how we figured this out. Your I think that was Allison, right? Was it me or was it your son, Amy? I thought, I thought it was Melanie. I thought it was my daughter. Yeah, oh, one of your children pointed out, and then I remember Spencer made a crack that we're like AAA. Like yeah. That, yeah. Yes, we're reliable. Like Apparently AAA. so. Yeah. Down, call us. Wait, a discount. Don't forget discount. Yes, we'll give you some good discounts. <laughs> we're bargain basement K-pop. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. This is taking a turn. That's what editing's <laughs> for. <laughs> I love it. Bargain basement K-pop. We could be on the night. TV selling some good stuff like Home Shopping Network like they used to do back in the day. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, because you know once this is oh I know we're getting off track a little bit, but this is funny just thinking what she said. You remember back in the day, like early in the morning, they used to do those um, compilation CDs with love songs. Oh yeah. We could be the one oh, yeah. to post that with K pop stars of the uh. second, third generation, even a fourth generation. <laughs> like, do you miss these K pop songs? Well, we have a compilation CD and just do that whole type of cheesy thing because we're barred in the basement, triple A. We will oh my god, that's together. so funny. That actually is a really good idea. That's a good idea. <laughs> I'm currently living in. Allison lives like 10 minutes away. Yeah. So we get to hang out every once in a while. COVID has kind of stopped that. But hopefully soon we'll get to like go go eat Korean, go to uh, yeah. a restaurant that we like. I almost said the name of the restaurant. <laughs> um, but go eat Korean food and hang out and do fun stuff. Um, but uh, I'm so gently. I know. I wish you live closer. So do I. Well, we all need to ditch our lives and move somewhere else now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Nuna Compound. Oh my god, that'd be like awesome. Like where you could just go and visit, like with people in a nice exclusive club, like only club members. 
We can't <laughs> yeah. you a fan girl out. We need a break from your family, your work, your job. Yeah, charter a bus. I'm telling you. And go to all the good places. Yeah. We only have to go to Georgia. That's where all the good Korean stuff is. Yeah, Georgia, California, Texas apparently has some good stuff. And oh, Texas, heck yeah, they do. Yeah, and I think and up north, New York and Jersey. Because apparently New York has the first H Mart was made, was started in New York, and the, and the store's still there. Small little time too. <laughs> nice. Yeah. But anyway, how about uh, we discuss how we got each of us got into K-pop? How did we discover this lovely rabbit hole that we are falling down deeper, deeper each day? It's, it's Amber's fault. Okay, so I guess I'll, I'll start since I'm to blame. Okay. Um, you're talking um, about it's, Amber is K-pop Yoda. Yes, Just so I y'all know, <laughs> you are K-pop baby Yoda, and you're a blessing in the sky. It's that I spend too much time. I spend too much time watching everything. Um, yeah, so let's see. I can remember the month and the year for sure. Uh, I was on work vacation for Christmas. So I worked at a university and we had two weeks off for Christmas. And so I was home with my daughter who at the time was, she was 13, I think. 14, I think she was 13. So it was December 2014, and she was a big Tumblr addict at the time. And so she had seen photos of Jungkook uh, from BTS and some other BTS um, Tumblr posts. And she was like, hey, mom, look at this, like, look at this video. We need to watch this video. And so we watched the War of Hormone video. It was, the, I think, the first thing we ever saw of BTS. And we just Sorry, went Sidebar, Cookie like, looks really good in that video. Go on. <laughs> oh, oh my god. So does Jimin. <laughs> Jimin was my first probably BTS bias, just solely based on the suspenders he wore. I know that's crazy. I, <laughs> I won't go into it. Like, how crazy. much I love. I love that. The visual of the whole video is just amazing. But man, there was something about Jimin and those suspenders I just like dug a lot. Um, so we we spent that whole rest of December watching K-pop videos. Watched BTS. We watched the American Hustle Life show. We watched um, some EXO stuff. We got into um, a little bit of Shiny at the time. Shiny came a little bit later for us, but actually we had seen clips of Shiny before we even saw BTS. Come to come to think about it. Uh, but yeah, that sort of started my fascination. And then, so fast forward about six months, um, and gosh, it was probably March or April of 2015, I got a chance to get tickets to go to the BTS, uh, Red Bullet 2 tour date in Dallas, which was going to be in July. So I started talking about it, and that's when... Amy saw me just going crazy about BTS and she's like, well, what's that? It took her a few months after that to really get into the K-pop thing. <laughs> wait, wait, my dad, my dad, girlfriend went to concert. Where, did you see, was it EXO you saw? Yeah, I was. Like, concert. I was like, damn it, girl, why did you ask me? <laughs> I went to concert. <laughs> I went to EXO. <laughs> Yeah, I went to, so I went to BTS, I went to the Red Bullet Tour, got to do the high touch, I know, thank you very much, I know, I'm lucky, I'm blessed, I'm fortunate, because not many people get you to do the hot touch. You have the seven anointed ones. Yeah. I have, I have, um, it, that's still surreal, I still know when Brianna and I walked out of the concert venue after meeting them, we both cried. <laughs> It was an emotional experience for both of us, um, but we uh, we went to that, and then like the next year, yeah, we went to see EXO, and I've seen several, like I've seen several groups now. Um, I've seen Shiny, luckily, thankfully, fortunately. Um, I've seen BAP twice, um, and then the three of us have seen NCT 127 together. Yeah. Uh, well, that's correction. real. The three of us saw the backs of all the cameras <laughs> and the It's still exactly. I can still see We it. We peeked through those to see NCT way the hell up there. 
Oh, yeah. God. Terrible yeah. venue. If anybody was at the Georgia concert, terrible venue. Yeah. Oh, it was so packed. I fussed. Trust me. I, I have a friend that works for Subculture, and I was like, okay, girl. I just want to let you know that this is awful. And I'll sit there and watch her. I didn't even get a chance to meet her because I know she was too busy, so I didn't bother her. But she was, like, escorting people back and forth, like sick girls that were, like, overheated, overexhausted, puking, fainting, um, because of how crowded that place was. It was bad. It was bad. It was yeah. Infinite energy was right there. Why the heck were we in the Coca-Cola Roxy? Something must have happened. Because remember that it took a while for the venue to be posted. So they probably could have had that venue. But something must have happened. That's all I can say. Something must have happened to where it broke down. They had to find a venue at the last minute. Because there's no yeah. way you yeah, could put them in that venue. We saw Super M at Infinite Energy. And that arena is awesome. Yeah, so something must have happened. I think that's where it was, wasn't it? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't get to go. Oh no. <laughs> that's that's oh, a whole sad story for me. Yeah, it's another day. <laughs> My poor extra ticket went to one of our mutual friends and I got to sit in the hospital for a month and a half. No big deal. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> By the way, I broke my ankle. That's that's what we're all joking about. Um, yeah, it was bad, but yeah. yeah um, it was bad. It was very sad. It was, it was very sad. I remember it being like, yes, for real. I am not kidding. I really can't go to the concert. Well, you know why this happens? Because you are not supposed to ever be in the same space as Kai. That's how uh, yeah. it plays out. My you daughter. Exo, he couldn't make it from Korea. You didn't get to see him. You went to see Super M. You broke your ankle the day before the concert. Or the day off? No, two days before. Uh, it was day it was the day we were coming down. Yeah. Dude, it's the Kai curse. It must be. Yeah. It, I'm never gonna get to meet Kai. It's so sad. It like hurts my heart. Be like beyond compare that my my love, my like favorite, favorite boy in EXO is never gonna get to like be in the same space as I am. <laughs> It will happen. It's just going to happen at a different time. <laughs> oh my god. A different, a different watch, maybe. Maybe. You never know. We're going to have to wrap Amber up in bubble wrap. Yes. Yeah, we'll yeah. Before the concert. Something. Give her a little breathing tube and some water. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> and, a, and a nice pee bag. Oh my god. <laughs> and so, I, I was not going there, Allison. I was looking out the excretion of her because I always joke it. My bad. <laughs> And we're going to have to tell SM and Dreammaker not to, like, mess up his visa because that's what happened the first time when I was supposed to see, when I saw it, so was that they screwed up his visa and called him Kai on his visa paperwork so instead of Jongin, which is his name. Oh, oh hell. That. That's just, that's yeah. Oh, one. That's not even go back to yesteryear. That is basic 101. Yeah, it was... Right. If, the, if that's really what happened, that's the story, that's what they claim, who knows if that's really what happened. He was on some of the rest of the tour, if I remember right, but my concert in Dallas... show after yours. <laughs> yeah, my, my show in Dallas, didn't. it didn't happen. It was sad. Uh, yeah, okay. Anyway, we're not going to... Like, okay, oh, I'm not going to... Okay, sorry. I'm not going to cry over that too much more. Um, okay, so... That's how I know Allison, I mean Amy, and that's how I ended up meeting Allison was through through that whole connection. Um, Allison has probably the coolest story of all of us because she has like lived in Korea. So Allison, won't you explain some of your background? Um, yeah, as Amber and Amy said, I did live in Korea. So that's where my first introduction to K-pop came from. Um, my mom was in the military, so we, when I was in, into my ninth grade year, I got told we're going to move to Korea for two years, and we were just going to say my age, but it was in the 90s. <laughs> so I was able to experience and see Generation 1 K-pop. Um, wow. That's wow. who I saw, and it was amazing. And being a military child and being on a military base, we get exposed to a lot of free concerts and stuff especially depends on where you live at so they want you to be more immersed in the culture so i was able to go see some people first generation um k-pop acts like i got to see h.o.t and i was oh, like, oh, oh, oh my god yes i remember when i saw h.o.t it was like a little festival or something and i'm sitting there in awe like what is this stuff i have no idea what it was 
and you know I guess people who used to was already living there kept explaining to me you know this is their music this is what they do and all this other stuff yeah and it was amazing and also side note because I moved to Korea that's how I got introduced to Backstreet Boys because Backstreet Boys came out the same time and it was such a big deal over there I was mm-hmm. like there's no way who's making a group like New Kids on the Block I got scolded for saying that and saying you don't make fun of BTS. I'm not BTS. Backstreet Boys. Woo. And so, <laughs> wow. It was it was great, but unfortunately, with everything, you have to move. I moved back to the states and where I was living at during my senior year. Nobody knew about K-pop. It was oh, nothing. Wait. So what? Oh. So that's in the '90s, right? So you you moved back to basically grunge music. I, no, I moved back to South hip hop. Like dirty South hip hop music. I was in marching band, and our marching band was a show style high step. And oh wow! To, nice. Yeah, when I went to band camp, they asked me about the song we're playing, and the song was "Who That Is Just Your Baby Daddy." And I'm like, <laughs> I never heard that song. And they asked me, "Where were you living at? Under a rock?" I said, "No, I was overseas." And overseas, <laughs> and at that time in Korea, they didn't allow a lot of rap music or hip hop music to come over there because. How conservative they were. Now it's a different story, and I'm sitting there like, "Oh my God, this music's the weirdest music I've ever heard." But that's what I started getting into, like uh, Three Six Mafia, um, yeah. Gang Gang Twins, um, East Side Boys, and Little Wayne. And so everything about K-pop left me. I didn't know anything. It was I got reintroduced to K-pop when I went um, and did the Disney program for the college students. And of course, there are students who are international, and there are a few students who I've met who were from Korea, and we just got to start talking, and they started explaining to me about K-pop again. I was like, this is interesting. So when I moved to the state that I am now, and when I start working at a job, I met somebody who's from the Philippines at that job, and she explained to me how huge K-pop was in her home country. I'm saying, like, what? And that's what connect us. And so she started sending me stuff about K-pop. And so I was like, let me look this stuff up. Maybe I can find some stuff back in the day when I used to listen to and wanted to share it with her. And then I saw the first one of the first videos was course was um Big Bang. Got to start seeing them and Rain. Rain was oh, an yeah. introduction oh. mm-hmm. into K-pop. And I was just like in awe, and I just kept yeah. watching video after video after video after video, and I have been listening to K-pop nonstop since about 2007-2008, and it is just evolved. Wow. So I can thank other people in my life who have brought it back to me because I probably, if I didn't meet the person at Disney or if I didn't meet the person at my job when I moved to the state. Um, in 2007 that I live at now, I probably wouldn't have been reintroduced to K-pop, maybe. Maybe I would have, but I probably would not have. And it was just amazing. And then the next thing I remember was... Everybody remember So You Think You Can Dance? I don't know if it's still on anymore. Oh yeah, I, I saw it. I know what you're talking about. I know where you're going. <laughs> yes, Wonder Girls. Yeah. So I saw them and Wonder Girls was my girl group. That was my group. And me and my friend went back to work. She's like, did you see him on there? I was like, oh my gosh, yes. Oh my God. So we're sitting there doing the song. Nobody, nobody but you and everything. And people at my job were looking at us like, what are they talking about? And I'm like, you don't know. I said, you got to go look at this. This is Wonder Girls. You don't know who Wonder Girls? That's when I realized that everybody knows about K-pop. And that was when you had to be... They do now. Now they do. Now that's when I learned how to be closet K-pop. And so I didn't share it with a lot of people because a lot of people looked at me weird with it. Mm -hmm. And so it wasn't until probably maybe about until I went to K-Con 2015, which was the first K-Con in New York, was when I started feeling more comfortable about K-pop. Because being around other people and people who are just the same age as me, even people who are younger as me, even people who are the same race as me, because we can go a whole nother discussion about being a black K-pop fan. We can go a whole nother discussion about being a black K-pop fan, because that's a whole nother rabbit hole that I don't want to go down, but we'll talk about it another day. Um, Just going there and feeling comfortable and not feeling like you're weird or you're out of place made me not really want to be in a K-pop closet anymore and say, I don't care what people think. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. So my goal was to share 
my love for K-pop with anybody and everybody who I meet. And even now at work, when certain people come around, they see my little decorated desk, they're like, oh, I know I saw the group down there. Was it this group you guys? I said, no, we can have a nice discussion. So it feels good. And like Amy said that she was a bridge to bridging me and Amber and her together because when I went into that chat group to find somebody for that concert, you know, Amy was willing because I think we were supposed to meet up with two of the people and they never showed. And me and Amy was like, alrighty then, I guess, you know. And we had it's a just good time. Yeah, it was just us and I guess it was meant to be. And we have had a good time. I love having Amber around me that somebody else who can school me on certain k-pop things and stuff that I don't know <laughs> <laughs> because I don't dive deep into like the theories and the eras and stuff like that I'm more into for the music and the visuals and stuff but I love having Amber there that can explain stuff to me so I think <laughs> yes well thank you thank you because I learned a lot that's why I call myself a novice expert because I have expertise in years, meaning I have been listening yeah. to that for years. However, I'm a novice when it comes to certain things with the fandoms, how certain things work, when it comes to pronouncing the names and stuff like that, or the stories and the baselines. So that's why with all three of us combined, we can just, we can learn a lot and share all this stuff. So yeah, that's my journey into K-pop. <sighs> Well, that's a cool story. The first thing I was going to ask you when you said you moved and uh, moved to Korea in the '90s is, okay, were you HOT or were you Shetskis? Because that's the big like that was the fandom like war at the time. And um, did, so you, you saw HOT, but did you get to see such Shetskis? I can never say their name, so no, pardon I don't, me. I don't know if I did or not. I can't honestly remember because I remember the festival was huge. They had so many acts. It's just HOT stood out for me because of those big old yeah. the gloves and the colors. And Rura stood out to me because of the reggae and the, and the rap and they were a um, co-ed group. That stood yeah. out to me. And there's another group and I can't remember who it is and I have to look it up. They stood out to me and the reason why. But I I really never was it like a stan. I just liked the stuff and loved it and immersed myself in it. But I wasn't this one who was able to be like a full K-pop stan at that time because I wasn't really thinking that there was anything of it. I thought, oh, this is right. like music and everything. So I didn't go in that deep. I just had fun with it. And then I realized when you move back to the States, uh, to the South, people looked at you kind of strange. So I just like, eh, I guess that's what it is. I guess this K-pop was just a fad. Nope. <laughs> But, and you know that that sort of like bridges into another topic that we wanted to talk about, which was the fact that that it is there's been such a change in the last few years between how people view K-pop then. A lot of people didn't even know what K-pop was. To now, everybody at least knows who BTS is. Like everybody, um, I know. Just like in 2000, yeah, in 2015, when I started really like going down that. After that December, and I started really going down into K-pop. Um, I remember being at work and talking about, "Oh, hey, I'm gonna get to go see this group," and they're like, "How did you even get into that?" And they all had such like ugly attitudes about it. Oh, yeah. They, it was so negative. And then so fast forward to when I started working um, at the the place I'm working now, which is a, at a TV station. Little by little, like 2015, like 2016, 2017. People started becoming a little more interested, and by the time I moved here, like I, people would walk into my office and be like, "Oh, hey, I saw BTS on, you know, name the name the show, Corden or whatever." And I remember also the day um, that God rest his soul, Jungkook died. People came to my office oh my to say, "Oh, hey, I saw." I saw where somebody died in K-pop. Are you okay? And it was such a, such a weird. It, it's such been it's been such a transformation to see how things have evolved and how like the how you wave um, has come over to America. People watch. I have a friend at work who watches K dramas all the time. Um, you know, I know people that keep up with it just because I started like talking about it, and they'll be like, "Oh, hey, blah 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 blah. I've seen that. I've seen this." Um, and there's such a big community now like mm -hmm. it was sort of big before but like the last especially the last couple of years it's just been insane and so and i know amy you want to let's talk about your 
your background a little bit more and how it's been for you, like how how things have been for you for like your family and or at work and things like that. How do people react to to your journey through K-pop? Well, I'll start real quick and I'll just like sum up my journey pretty quick because it was it's fast. So it was like <laughs> the original the original original introduction to K-pop in this house was there was a Surface Pro commercial with mm-hmm. two anyone singing I'm the best. Yeah. And my husband saw that commercial and he's like, what is that? So he looked it up. He went down the rabbit hole first, which he he would totally say he never did that first. And he played, he's like, listen to this song. This is so cool. He's like, listen to this other song. So he played me the two to anyone. Um, I'm the best and I love you, I think was the other one. Oh, wow. Those are, those are cool. Okay. But that was the end of it. And then yeah. it was Amber's tweet that I was like, well, who's, what's BTS? She's like, well, it's this K-pop boy group from South Korea that everyone should know. I'm like, what's it stand for? Like behind this, well, I think I thought it stood for behind the scenes. And she's like, no, no, no. <laughs> so I think it's like hilarious that now they've sort of tried to adopt that name over here, but it's beyond the scene, but whatever. There'll always be Bang Ten boys to me, but anyway, so. Um, then, I just went down that rabbit hole and I, I think the first, I might have watched Dope first actually. I think that yeah. was the first MV I watched. Or That's the one I told you to watch. watch. I think so. And then I started just, you know, clicking, you know, what else can I watch? What else can I see? And then um, Boys With, was it Boys With Fun? Probably. It was the one that came right after. That's like. Yeah, and they didn't even do an MV for that. They just had like a stage performance, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is my, this is my group." And I've always been a boy bander person. Same. Menudo was huge for me when I was little—not little, teenager. I loved Menudo. I loved New Edition, Backstreet Boys, In Sync. I was like, "Yeah, they're just got good-looking people who can sing, and then they throw in dancing." Yes. Or so mm-hmm. I thought. I mean, I thought American boy groups. I'm like, yeah, they got it. You know, NSYNC. Oh, yeah. On the table with the dancing than any other group I'd seen. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, they're still cool. Everyone else is still cool, even though they stand around a lot. <laughs> but it's fine. I, I like, I was like, I'm a boy band. I still like single groups, too. Like solo artists, but boy bands are my thing. And then I see Korean boy groups. I'm like, whoa. This is like other level greatness. This is like, how can they move like that? How can they dance like that and still be singing? And a lot of haters are gonna say, oh, they're lip syncing. Well, yeah, some performances, maybe. You try to run your ass around the stage as much as they do and not be out of breath. Yeah. But these kids are trained. That's, that's, I think, the thing that gets me the most about the industry is that these kids go in as kids. And they train for years before they debut. And by the time they come out, they're machines at this craft. And they love it and they own it. And they, it's like, I nothing against our artists, but our artists are soft. They're just the U.S. kids. Yeah. They're not going to go through. The minute a kid from this, from the from U.S. would have a problem, they'd be like, Mom, yeah. I need a break. I can't do this. Some of these kids haven't seen their parents in years. You know what? That makes a level. Oh, go ahead. A different level, and I'm sorry. So that's so that's when I became, and then of course, when BTS was coming over for their, I guess it wouldn't be Love Yourself. What was the one before that? This is horrible. I should know this. The Wings Tour. The Wings Tour. Mm -hmm. So we were gonna go to that, and Alice or Amber was gonna go with and Bree, and then she ended up not being able to get there, and so I'm like, well. Either I go by myself, or I don't see them. And I fell in love with BTS June of 2015. So that tour would have been, when was that, 17? Uh, 16? Uh, can't call it 16. It's very interesting. 16, 17, somewhere around then, because they came to KCON. Oh, yeah, it was 17, because that's, because I I saw Shiny the same weekend. Right. I knew. So it was, so it'd been a a couple years just watching them on the little screens of my computer. Mm -hmm. 
And then I was like, you know what? And I'm like, I don't know if you all have knew this about me, but I'm like the scaredest, most cautious person on the planet. I used to sit there at night and think, I want to go watch a video. I want to rent a video. And yes, that means I'm old because none of you rent videos anymore. But I'm like, okay, is it worth it to get like, like accosted to go get a video or should I just stay home and watch what's on TV? I am like a scaredy cat. I'm a complete country mouse. I do nothing that would risk my life.